Welcome back, Victus here. I'm going to talk about another Victorian era mod, but this time we're going to go to America. This is the American Civil War Brothers vs. Brothers mod for Empire Total War. I've been doing videos about Victorian era mods that can be played either with Napoleon Total War or Empire Total War. This time, again, is the turn, as I mentioned before, for Empire Total War. And this is the time for Confederates and the Union. I'm going to go into the main screen that you see here. So you can you can see what is this all about. So I have been playing a little bit. I have a campaign. I have started already a campaign and that's what I'm going to show you here. But here I'm going to go first into single player and show you what you can find in play battle. So first of all, you have the option to do land battles. Here you're going to be able to use other factions. What do I mean by this? The only factions that you can play on the campaign map, and it's either the normal campaign map or the Warpath campaign map, are the Confederates and the Union. But here you can choose the other factions. Sea battles are not available actually inside the campaign you can recruit uh, steamers but i think they are not polished however you can see steamers at least the first iterations of the steamers not exactly ironclads then you have sieges here which they work a little bit heavy on on the engine and of course you can view the replays, save battles and scenarios are not available i think scenarios is the area where you can where you can select historical battles something like that so then i'm going to go to the civil war campaign now when you click there as you can see you're going to see here the United States, which is the Union flag, with Abraham Lincoln, and this is going to show you the map. The map is this. You cannot go to Europe. You can interact with Europe, as uh, as I'm going to show, but that's it. You can interact with Europe. You can form alliances, but the only factions that you can select, as I said at the beginning, are these two factions, North or South. Now, you're not going to be able to choose other faction from here. The only faction that you can select is on the launcher. When you hit the launcher, you're going to be presented with two options. The, the two factions that you can select, Union or Confederates. Then, from then, you select the faction that you want to play as, and then you go here, and you start the... You start the game now it's very dependent on the launcher but that's another story i'm here to show you the campaign and with that eventually we're going to play as the union and try to eliminate the confederates for liberty here you can select in between short long prestige and world domination Actually, if you select short campaign, it says capture and hold 25 regions by the end of 1865, which is the end of the war. You begin in 1861 and long campaign does not change that criteria. So in terms of this, this is the same thing. I'm not going to start the game because I already have one. So I'm going to load the already started one that I have and see you on the map. So here we are in the map. I have muted the music because 
you see the music it has it has music at the beginning on the splash screens but it does not have a uh, unique music on the actual on the actual battles so it's a uh, more of the same thing for the video purposes i'm going to play without music so let's go and see what what you have here so i'm going to zoom out so here we have the map we are presented with a welcome from the from the team that developed this mod this is uh american civil war 3.5 they are presenting here the 3.5 even though the launcher has the 3.6.2 for some reason so i'm going to close this apparently this is not um updated uh just before continuing you have to understand that this mod is old so this mod um perhaps some of you already know the mod some of you already have played the mod for me it's um, a completely new mod and it's very nice because we we're going to see here a lot of uh, interesting stuff concerning the the design of the unit cards that i think are very unique and very nice and a lot of stuff that is very interesting from from the time period of course in terms of technology and of course weaponry so let's continue here and let's see as of right now you can see here the map i'm going to go to the diplomatic relations in the major nations we have the confederate states and the united states of america which is the union we are already at war with them uh, as you can see, I'm going to show you here the year. As of right now, is 1861. Apparently, each... Let me see. I think... As far as I understand, each time that you hit the end turn button, you are going to pass half half month. So you're going to pass two weeks each time you hit end the turn. There's not too much to see here, apart from the president, which is Abraham Lincoln. We, are, we already know that. Now, here in Ministers, we see William Seward, Salmon Chase, uh, Edward Bates, and Simon Cameron, and Gideon, Gideon Wells. Now, I'm not very well versed in American history. For those of you comrades that are American, you can tell if these guys are historically accurate or not. Now, something that I have seen here in trade is that they have made a little bit of changes here. For example, here we have armaments, which is quite neat. We have this thing, which is munitions. And, well, actually, Ivory has a different uh, icon here. We have textiles with a different one, I believe. And then here, as you can see here, there's a revolver here. Uh, in resources and it says whiskey well actually it says whiskey but i believe this is talking about armaments something like that here we have as well munitions which is here over here so these are quite interesting stuff that you can see here in trade and then let's check here we have the chronicles here all of these chronicles, you can clearly read them. And these are going to appear each time that you end the turn. You're going to see chronicles and it's going to tell you the story of the American Civil War, which is pretty good. So basically, when you go to diplomacy, you can go to minor nations and here you are going to find all of the other nations and you're going to find of course france well actually france is inside the actual area here and netherlands because they have the dutch guiana so now we can see that we can interact with the other europeans by the fact that they have here colonies so we have here we have the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, here. Then we see Britain in, in Canada, 
I'm going to show you the the models here are actually different from from the vanilla ones, which is neat. We have France here in French Guiana. In here we see the Grenadine Confederation, which apparently have appeared recently. We have Haiti, we have Mexican Empire and Mexican Republic. By the way, you begin with Mexican Republic and the Mexican Empire apparently have appeared here. So now that we are talking about Mexican Empire, Mexican Republic and all this stuff, when you go to battles and you do the custom battles, you can actually play with uh, both um, both countries, e either the Mexican Empire or Mexican Republic. Whatever you are going to find here, you're going to find on the units. So here we see again Spain, which has in position their position here in Cuba. And then here we see United States of Colombia. As you can see, this apparently is the the Grenadine Confederation, is the opposite of the Colombian United States. And so far and so forth, we have the Mexican Empire, Mexican Republic, which are some sort of the same thing as the Union as Confederates. And at least that's how I, how I understand this. Uh, what is happening here? The actual Confederate States, if I open negotiations, you're going to see that these guys are allied with the Mexican Republic. But the Mexican Republic instead, and that's something important, they are enemies of the United States, trade partners with the Mexican Empire. For some reason, they were at war the, with the Mexican Empire, and now the Mexican Empire is allied of the Mexican Republic. I thought that they were still at war. For some reason, these guys made peace with the Republic, and now they are at war with Spain. Quite interesting. Mexican Republic is, is allied of that guy, and is at war with me, with the Union, because they are allied with the Confederation. Which is quite weird, isn't it? Confederates allying themselves with, with the Mexicans, but that's what is happening here. Apart from that, the Confederates evidently are at war with me, and we are trading with almost all of the nations that we can trade with. Now, uh, there's a lot of things here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the units and the cards, which are very neat. So, as we as we go, we are going to see that. So, I'm, let me show you here the the British units, the British models here for for the map. Here we see an army here of of the British, and you can see that they have their Victorian era uniform, which is pretty neat, pretty, pretty beautiful, very be beautiful indeed. And another in interesting thing, now, you can see here that instead of uh, those uh, carts with, with horses, we see trains. This is a very, a very cute and a very interesting detail here that you can see. Why? Because it's very simple. You can go here and go in in, in 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 infrastructure. You can see that you have the option to upgrade the railroads, as you can see here. Now, because of the time, as you can see, construction here is is doubled. Each can each of these is going to take double the time. Here leads me to the fact that, as you can see, everything here is not upgraded. You begin the whole situation without any single upgrade. Everything is just as you can see here in Boston, Massachusetts, that you see everything, everything um, empty and everything in the first level. You're going to see these in all the map. So these, I believe, they made this because Perhaps this way everything is going to be completely uh, at the same level for for both factions. So this is one interesting thing that you have to take into account. There is 
no upgrades whatsoever on the provinces. In terms of here in politics, you're going to see the tax levels are going to, to be at the lowest level. Lowest level, meaning that everything here is going to be yellow. With that being said, I need to explain what I'm trying to do here and what is happening. So uh, they are blockading us with a fleet here in Port Lois. It's a trading port. Now, talking about ports. Now, this is something interesting. Ports here, instead of doing the the normal, you see, let me show you here a, a clean a clean port here. Now, these guys, shipyards, are not going to produce ships. The guys that produce ships are going to be trading ports. Now, I, I believe this is interesting because if you know the history, you know that these guys were blockading each other, their ports. Mostly the Union start to blockade the, the rural areas of the Confederates because the Confederates were relying on slaves and that was the first reason they they declare war and they seceded from the united states because of the slave pro-slavery factions and the faction that was against slavery long story long story short these guys relied on blockading the confederation the reason the the Europeans were seeing this war quite unbalancing their, their their trade and their economy because they were relying on the shipments that that were exported from the south of the United States, which were actually relying on cotton, sugar plantations, and uh, tobacco plantations, all that stuff. So, because of that, I think it's very neat the fact that the um, trading ports are the ports that are actually going to produce the the wealth and actually the the units the naval units now in terms of the naval units because you see you don't have the button here and the option to increase technologies but i'm gonna show you here i have this fourth rate paddle steam frigate so this is the picture here, and exactly as you see here the picture, this is the actual the actual model of the unit. You see these steamships that, I mean, these were steamships, but they still use sails, just as it says here. Now these guys have um, firepower 254, a range of 950, which is a full range, and an accuracy of 60. Now, hull strength, they are very strong. 2600 and i'm going to show you why because if you go here these are the options that you have i'm going to begin with i'm going to begin with the first first rate steam frigate now this guy is a steam frigate as you can see now this guy has a 2856 and the the actual fourth fourth rate paddle steam frigate steam frigate has two 2600 but if you see here the this is a sloop of war sloop of war is not this is a brig that is still very very powerful very very um heavy but the firepower is very very poor in comparison we still have mortars we have schooners and we have uh, gunboats these guys as well they have very very slow firepower so that's the reason these two guys, as you can see, are 1, 1,124 for hull strength in comparison with the steamers. Um, this, is a, this is not a steamer. This steamer, which has 2,600, and here we have the... This is Sail Frigate. Sail Frigate, which is not a steamer, but it's still a second-rate sa Sail Frigate, which is very strong. But the firepower is lower than the steamers. We have for steamers we have the second rate steam frigate, 
at the first rate, steam free rate. Now this guy, as you can see, has a range of 1000, has the, the best range so, so far that I have seen, and you cannot go further than this. And this thing is quite, quite um, interesting. 1000 in comparison with the most powerful first rate sale frigate, which is, well, actually the same, but This is the first rate sail frigate. This is the ah. Oh, there's no any. There's there's any no change, no change indeed. So as I was saying, the even though the most powerful ones, which are the first rates, I'm going to show you the comparison in between the first rate steam frigate, even though it says steam here is not a steamship this is the first rate sail frigate which is the same the only thing that changes here is the recruitment cost so it's quite um i think it's not developed but i haven't tested this on on battle but i can tell and i attest that this guy here which is a rate paddle steam frigate it's actually a steam frigate it has these these things that you can see on the picture well actually this one is the same the fourth rate and the fourth rate actually and uh, yeah the fourth rate then you have the howitzer gunboat you can see the firepower is com is decisively better for the for the steam frigate well even even the first rate sail frigate which is actually the first rate steam frigate the one that is that is more powerful but this one is not bad and it's more it, it has a more maneuverability you can see here high maneuverability and speed of 13. i think the steam steamer is is quicker than most of the other sails even though it says some some of them says say second rate steam frigate the second rate eventually have to be less heavy than the first rate but even the even that is not so fast as the as the fourth rate paddle steam frigate I'm pretty sure we're going to see a battle here because I need to 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 attack these guys here that are blockading my shipments my shipments to Spain, Haiti and the United States of Colombia are being um, blockaded here so because Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is actually the capital the is the region capital I have developed this area for recruitment and I am still developing it because I want to recruit a lot of uh, units here and in this area I've been developing the Iowa Minnesota area this is the area that I'm I've been developing now I have a, an army here this guy is commanded by by George Meade this is George Meade, the commander of this. Actually, you can recruit the commanders separately here, as you can see. I don't know why is the reason he here. Oh, yeah, you can recruit the commanders here. And uh, the great, the great ones are are the guys that I have already recruited, and of course, I recruited all the famous ones like uh, Buford, uh, the guy here, Burnside and mcclellan all of them are on my armies and the only guys that i have not recruited yet are these two so here so far i cannot recruit more but you can see here that i have here george mead let me see here i have the the other strong army that i have is this one commanded by philip sheridan up here we have buford Here's Buford, and I have sent some of the Buford horses here because 
There are buffered, buffered uh, units here. So here we see, this is our, the Union Buford's Gallery. Here we see George McClellan. And this is Buford, so far as I know. So I'm trying to find the... Yeah, there you are. Here we see two cards of Union Buford's Gallery. These are Buford Dragoons. And I, I have sent I have sent them to to him because this is the guy called Buford. Here is McClellan, and here we see the guy that is besieging these Richmond, Virginia, is nothing nothing but the Ulysses Grant. Yeah, of course, the star. So here we have this the the general of the generals here in the Union. So. So far, uh, as you can see, I have I, I am besieging here. The reason I have these guys here, you see, I have here another general here. This is Burnside. And I am using this Union Cavalry to scout the area. I haven't seen any Confederates here, but I see one here, commanded here by no one. Uh, this Confederate army, I believe, is here to secure this area. So we see this guy here. In this area, we see two Confederate armies that are a little bit beaten. These two armies are very powerful. And we have just one full stack army here, commanded by McClellan. I'm going to talk about the units in a little bit. Uh, here, as I said, we have sent reinforcements for Buford with Buford's cavalry. Here I'm blockading this access to Missouri because uh, historically uh, the Union took all of the Mississippi down here. So when they took the Mississippi, they start pushing through here. So that's my my actual plan. I'm trying to, to figure out here, but there are some flaws on my plan. So my initial plan was to move a couple of armies from here and push into here in the meantime i was to take virginia and start beating these guys with mcclellan and grant but there's a problem the most powerful army from the confederates is this guy here and they, this one is actually commanded by a as you can see here it's a one two three four five star general this guy is five stars. Sheridan is five stars. Uh, let's see how many stars is this. This is three stars. And this guy is as well five stars. Uh, well, there's a problem. If you see here closely, I'm going to show you that here I have this card with the flag of the Union. These are the Union State Militia. Now, I'm going to show you the actual the actual cards because everything that you click here is going to show you this beautiful card now something amazing about this mod and this is I, I haven't seen this in other mods this is very very good very very neat you can see the actual weapon that they are using the Mississippi M1841 now how cool is this you can go here with the Missouri volunteers and you're going to they're going to show you here actually springfield m1842 how neat is this if you go for example something different this is illinois scottish these are the illinois scottish regiment how cool is this enfield because they are scottish regiment enfield you see enfield p1853 so this decision to put this style of cards is awesome for me it has a magnificent touch because you feel like you are playing a tabletop game. I don't know you. You can you can give me your opinion, but for me is is it's very neat. It's very neat. Because there were there were so many different 
types of rifles in this in this time that is quite neat i haven't tested if each rifle has a different um impact on the actual battle i haven't tested that but but it's neat it's neat so the problem here is that these guys here are very weak why because they have union state militia here union state militia as you're going to learn from the play from the playthrough are the most basic ones are militias even though these guys are volunteers as well which have now let's make the comparison here melee attack 4 2 8 8 for defense and morale this is for the militia and the volunteers they are just changing one point in melee attack for example the I think is the Illinois. These are the Missouri Volunteers, right? The Illinois. Illinois Volunteers, as far as I know, are, are quite um, quite good because they have nine defense. They have very, very the highest defense on the Volunteers, if I am not mistaken. I hope I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm not mistaken you can see Missouri volunteers sorry Illinois volunteers they have nine defense and seven seven morale the Scottish regiment nine defense and seven morale now let's let's focus on on the melee attack and charge bonus of the Scottish regiment and the Illinois five and seven of course this guy have these because they have ranked experience let me see if I have over here some other scottish there should be another scottish because this thing is another thing that is important here you're going to have a limit for each volunteer for each volunteer conscript whatever you do even militia you have a limit you see here that the the the, the greatest limit that you have is militia 15 of 15 but for example this unit that is a little bit more more uh, um, special this you will have one of one so there's no other uh comparison i cannot compare what is the 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 normal but uh let me show you here i have conscripts conscripts i think i'm recruiting conscripts here conscripts now conscripts yeah here is my conscript factory these guys are the next level on the actually this is a union marine this is different these are marines these are, these are elite union marine you can see they are using the springfield uh the springfield m1855 now let's do the comparison here because uh this is the neat thing because you see the 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 guys that are using the springfield here this is the old version this is the 1842 version of the springfield these are the volunteers but up here up here the these guys that are the union states marine corps wow well, marine corps are using springfield m m1855 so far as i know even the union conscripts are using a lesser 61 oh they're using a better one actually they are using the the top notch rifle of the time springfield m1861 these are the union conscripts Union conscripts, as you can see, they still have the flag. They are, you can recruit 15 of them. But these, with these that are elite, uh, I, I believe this has something to do with the, with the rank. This is C1. I'm not sure. I can see that this, this, this could tell me, uh, well, obviously I know that this is a, uh, a special unit. And you have the option to recruit these two out of two. And these have Springfield M1855. Quite interesting, really. But these, this is interesting. Now, let's do a comparison here. So, in comparison, the Union conscripts, they have 4287. And these guys are crazy. 7, 4, 11, 9. So this is the most elite, even though there, there are some other guys here. Uh, let me show you here. These are Brooklyn Red-Legged Devils. 
They have 10 morale, but they have less attack than the than the Marine Corps. Marine Corps. Marine Corps, they have seven. And these are the Where are they? We have option of two of two. This guy RC1. And they have Enfield P P1850 53. Now it's going to tell you uh, a lot of history here. You can see actually the history of the regiment here. And each of these each of these cards have, have history. So it's a uh, pretty neat. Pretty neat indeed. And another interesting and amazing stuff is the 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 variety that you have to to recruit uh, this let, let me let me show you here because here i'm still I'm, i have the ability to recruit more here now this is the three inch horse artillery and it's going to show you in the card look at this look how beautiful it is it, it is going to use canister shot um case shot and bolt shot and this thing it's going to show you here the difference is this is a three inch ordnance rifle and this is a horse artillery this is part rifle this one is the napoleon 12 pounder you can see double canister canister and and solid shot and then you have here the howitzer with shell shot and canister Then we have the six pounder horse artillery and 12 pounder gun with, oh, actually, it's quite the same. Uh, shell shot, solid shot with the 12 pounder Napoleon and this one. Actually, this one, I have noticed right now that this one is the same as the Napoleon 12 pounder and 12 pounder Napoleon. So. Pretty neat as you can see. So the reason I was saying that this unit is very weak is because of the composition of the unit. And here we have the most powerful units from this uh, faction. Actually, they have this Rhodes Brigade. Look at this. 11 defense and 12 morale. These guys are like, like Marines. These are the Rhodes Brigades. How powerful are these guys, including the Confederate Arcan Arkansas Mounted Infantry, 20, uh, 11 defense and 11 morale. If I make the comparison with the Union, this is Union Vidette Cavalry, 10, 10, 10, charge bonus 10, defense 10 and morale 10. These guys here, these guys here, even though I cannot see the, the charge, they have melee defense 11 and morale um, 11, which is stronger than this. These are the dead, but uh, let. Uh, how about the Union Cavalry? I think I'm going to find the Union Cavalry. I'm, I'm going to consolidate these ordnance pieces here. Let's move it here. Uh, here are the Union, Union the dead and the... No, here are no Union Cavalry. Where are the Union Cavalry? Somewhere around here. I'm pretty sure this guy here, McClellan, has the... Has the Union Cavalry. Here we have the Union Cavalry. Union Cavalry is 10, 10, 10. And the Vedette Cavalry, just to for comparison's sake, the Vedette Cavalry is the same, 10, 10, 10. Something changed here. This is a C2, the Vedette Cavalry. And the Union Cavalry, 34, 40, and 45. Pennsylvania Cavalry is completely different because these are Lancers. Union Cavalry, what is this? Regular Union Cavalry. So the Union Cavalry here, you see 8, 10, 10, 10, and here we see 34, 40, 45. What about the Videt? 
the debts are 35, 44, 45. So they are slightly better in accuracy. So you can see Sharps, Sharps Scartine M 186053, something like that. But the Union still have better, I think. C2. In comparison with Buford's cavalry, which they are slightly better, you can see accuracy, better accuracy. Buford's cavalry have better accuracy, better reloading skill, and the same ammunition. These are the best. Buford's cavalry, they have 10 melee attack. 14 charge bonus, they have the best charge, and the defense is 10, 10, it's the same, but the charge bonus 10 and 14, 14 morale, 11, I committed a mistake, it was 11, 14, 11, 14, instead of the 10, 10, 10 of the Union and the Dead Cavalry. So, without further ado, uh, the plan is to, okay, I need to defeat this army. This is the major problem here. I need to defeat this. And then I need to capture uh, Mississippi. When I capture Mississippi, we're going to have everything here to go straight to Savannah. And this guy needs to deal with these two guys. And just as you can see now, I cannot attack them because it's going to be suicidal. And here, when I take this, then we're going to wait. So before, before advancing here, I need to deal with this, with the center here. Center, I mean Mississippi center to the to the east. And here, because we have a huge part of the Mississippi River here, we're going to wait here with these guys. These are militias. And I have Mr. Mead here waiting for the order to advance in this area. The problem is when some of these countries attack the confederates. And the country that is at war with the confederate, apart from me, is no is nothing. So but hopefully Mexico is not going to turn quite crazy and start taking taking here uh, Texas. Every video that I record on the Let's Play, I'm going to put a different unit from the factions that you can find in this beautiful mod, and we're going to revise the units of the factions one by one. And today, in this video, I'm going to revise and we're going to check the units for the faction of Colombia. So let's begin. The first unit that we're going to check is the Granadian General, which is obviously uh, the general for the Colombian nation. Now, let me make a point here. The There are two nations that are the same exact models, and those nations are Colombia and the Granadian Confederation. The reason is because the Granadian Confederation is a more monarchical faction that represents the faction of monarchists in the region of Colombia. And then we have the, I believe that is called the United States of Colombia, which is a more democratic one. So the flags of these two nations are exactly the same and the units as well so let's check the colombian nation as i said before this is the granadinian or granadian it is here granadina general which is the colombian general here we see a distinction from the other troops that they have these this style of uniform from the hussars the european hussars now you can see the stats here and you can feel free to pause and see the stats from each of the units that we're going to be checking here. So this is the Colombian Colombian general. Over here we have the 
Colombian Hussars. Now, Colombian Hussars use lances. You can toggle skirmish mode and dismount these guys. They use Hussar uniform, of course. And you can see that they are exactly the same as the model from the Grenadinian or Colombian general. So this is the unit or the Hussars. And here we see a different uniform for the commander. Well, let's go ahead and check the regulars of Colombia. These use Springfield M1842. Now, this represents the influx and the actual influence that the Americans have in the region. And this is going to be seen, obviously, in this situation uh, from, from the factions that are dependent on other nations. In the case of the nations that are from America, are going to be using equipment from the United States and the factions that are European, as you will see, are going to be using equipment from the British Empire. So these guys are the white uniform of the, of the actual regulars from Colombia. We see that they have a gray stripe crossing their their trouser they use backpacks as well and the caps had this black cap with the white pompoon now let's get on with the colombian these are colombian or granadinian militia these guys represent the peasants the peasantry of the land, the people that toil the land, and the people that are going to fight for the territories using a brown vest, of course, an outdated, of course, in these times. The brown vest was used before the Enfield by the Englishmen. And these guys have, of course, an outdated musket here so here we have the militia for the colombian and grenadinian nation of course we're going to go and see the ordnance pieces for these nations we're going to begin with the grenadinian or colombian six pounders this is the six pounder we can see here they are Manned by artillerists that have as well the white uniform. Six pounders for the Colombians, they have normal shot, canister shot, and of course shrapnel shot. Let's go ahead and see the 12 pounders here. This is a 12 pounder howitzer, which is different from, from the actual 24. We have here the 12 pounder gun. This is the 12 pounder gun, and here we have the 12 pounder, 12 pounder howitzer. So let's see. The 12 pounder howitzer has a firepower of 36 in comparison with the 12 pounder, which has the only difference the range, which is higher for the 12 pounder. The howitzer has less, less range. An accuracy of 20 has a howitzer and 30 the normal one and then we have a reload skill of slightly less than the actual 12 pounder so this is the 12 pounder howitzer with the same round shot canister shot and shrapnel shot so let's go ahead and see here the 12 pounder which is going to have the same type of shots which is the solid shot called here in the card the, the canister shot is called canister and the shrapnel shot is called double canister on the card so that is for the 12 pounders and finally we can go to the 12 24 pounder howitzer this is the biggest one 
This has a firepower of 72 in comparison with these and have, of course, a slightly better range than the 12 pounder howitzer. This one has slightly better and has, however, a less reloading skill. You can feel free, as I said before, to pause and see the stats of each of these units and appreciate their models. The next faction that we are checking in here in Brothers vs. Brothers is the French. The French have not a lot of options, as you can see, but they have interesting uniforms that are going to interest us. So let's begin with the normal French general. As you can see, the normal French general has his uniform that is very, very distinctive from the French with the blue coat and the red trousers. This is a very French uniform. Here we see the commander that has a different color of cap, which is a red one, and he has uh, red epaulets plus a red sash. This is for the French general. We see the cavalrymen here. And then we see here the French cavalry. French cavalry, of course, they have the same uniform, they have the red trousers and blue Cody, and all of them have blue cap. Let's have a look at the commander, of course, is this is distinct in the fact that he has a red cap. This is for the regiment of French cavalry here. Let's continue and see the French regulars, French regulars holding here their proud French flag. We see the, this is very, very uh, nice, this is a very nice uniform that resembles pretty much a lot to the uniform that was used at the beginning of World War One. Here we see that these guys have a red cap. And they have backpacks as well. Here we, here we see this beautiful unit of French regular infantry. Now let's go ahead and check the French Legion. French Legion, I'm pretty sure that is as well the French Foreign Legion. Even though it's not called French Foreign Legion. And as you can see, these guys have a very, very neat uniform with red epaulets. And they have, of course, we have seen this before in my channel. And this was, if you haven't checked that out, you can go and check the British East, East India Company Let's Play that I have in my channel. You will see that these guys have a cap with a piece of cloth covering from for the sun. And these guys have a distinction from the other regulars that these guys have this type of trouser, which is of course red, and they have their blue coaties, but with this hat that is a, a white white hat that we can see them and differentiate them from, from afar, as you can see here. You can see the regular ones here, and these are the French Foreign Legion. French Foreign Legion, a very strong a very strong unit we can see the card here very nice card they are using belgian m1842 ah and of course we didn't check what the french regulars were using they are using as well the belgian m1842 continuing here <clears throat> we are going to see here the ordnance pieces for the french of course we have here the french 12th pounder howitzer and the prettiest thing is the difference in uniforms that these artillerist uh, guys have in comparison with the regiments of foot the artillerist of the french as you can see have these this type of uniform 
and yeah this is the as i said before the 12 pounder that uses the normal round shot which is the shell shell shot canister shot and case shot which here in the game is called shrapnel shot let's go ahead and see the 12 pounder napoleon now this is of course 12 12 pounder napoleon here in 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 comparison with the 12 pounder howitzer is pretty much has more range much more accuracy and a better reloading skill the 12 pounder napoleon is basically a better piece from the howitzer counterpart and finally here we see the 24 pounder napoleon call with their 825 range and a pretty much in comparison the the 650 sorry i just misclicked here this was for the 12 pounder napoleon which has the best range in comparison with the 12 pounder howitzer but the 12 pounder 24 pounder sorry howitzer has a less range but has a firepower of 120 the most powerful ordnance unit uh, for the french of course always the 24 the 24 pounder here and you can see a much better accuracy but a less reloading skill they still have the shell shot, canister shot, and case shot. Okay, so uh, here we have three turns until surrender. We're building our navy here to, to be able to defeat these and stop the blockade. And yeah, here we're, we cannot move. So here I have sent... Okay, the reason I have sent this guy here, this is a militia with two pieces of six pounders. The reason I have sent these guys here, now this, these pounders have very low firepower, but they have eh, quite good range. These guys are, I have sent them to raid here in the hope that this man here, uh, John Hood, is going to attack me here. If I manage to lure him here, I can defeat him from the from the bridge right so let's see what happens here so here we have the chronicle you can can I'm not going to read the chronicle because we're not here for the history uh yeah simple roads we have we have made all these simple roads in in the northern provinces okay okay pennsylvania we have the conscripts ready so the reason i'm doing the conscripts is because i need a, a new army here full stock army here to be able to attack here in the meantime let me see the conscripts here. Okay. Let's see. I have here the possibility to recruit Pennsylvania Irish volunteer, which doesn't look bad. They have a Mississippi M1841. These are sharpshooters, skirmishers. Let's take this one. And more Union conscripts here. Now, actually, I need to do the last one, which is this. So this way, I will have the fifteen conscripts ready. The reason I'm not doing that in the other in in this side, I wanted to have them here, but I cannot recruit them here. I'm still building the stuff here. I'm still building regional command, and it's not about it's not about the regional command. It's about the barracks. If you see here, I show you the drill school. You have the barracks, the drill school, and then you have military academy. You need the drill school to be able to recruit the... 
the regular infantry or the Union conscripts here. Now, regular infantry is C1. Regular infantry, as you can see, we have full regular infantry here. So talking about tire, tires in in the units, for example, here we see tire 1 militia. The militia is possibly tire 1. This is going to be tire 1, and I have noticed that the C2 doesn't stand for for the level for the tire of the unit or the or the level how elite the unit is uh, as far as i can see up to this point this doesn't it doesn't have to do with that if someone knows what is the meaning of this i would be more than happy to know but in terms of the ranks of the units i mean which is the lower unit and which is the highest, I could assume, we might assume that Union State Militia is the lowest one. Then we go for conscripts here, because you see conscripts have 4287. Even I think the morale of the militia is better. There's the militia here. Four two eight eight. So then we can say that the the conscripts here four two eight seven they have less morale. Conscripts have less morale, but are almost the same as militia. And then eventually it goes up to these guys, United States Marine Corps. These guys have better accuracy than the Union infantry, but they have less morale. You're going to see here. I'm pretty sure that it was less morale. This is regular infantry. Regular regular infantry have better morale. But they have the same defense. And the charge bonus is better for the United States Marine Corps. I, I believe these Marine Corps are the same in comparison in between the conscripts and militia. This is in regular and elite. Elite in the fact that these guys have uh, these guys have better attack and charge bonus. They are stronger. So two turns here. I'm still using these as a scout. So let's continue the campaign here. Enough of the of the units. So I'm going to send this Union Dragoon Cavalry with carbines. And see if I can spot some enemies here. Okay, I'm going to send them back. So there are no enemies here. Now let's see here. I'm going to advance. Uh, usually I take my Union Cavalry. Yeah, we still see these guys here. So let's return this guy here. And perhaps we can lure one of them here. So I'm going to raid here. And go into the woods here. We still have to wait these guys to reach here. They are not uh, fixing this, which is quite interesting. Let's see the diplomatic situation. So this didn't work. I couldn't lure them. So now I'm going to continue with my Videt Cavalry. And see if I can spot something here. Oh, there you are. So I have spotted one guy here. This is possibly the army of Texas. So we know that there's a there is one army there. So now what about here? Okay, so we see another army here. We see another army here. This means that this guy is here to spot anything that moves from here. So let's move these ordnance pieces here.
Now, I'm not going to make infrastructure here because I don't want them to be to be able to move in the west. The west, I will use it to, to attack when I isolate the west. At the moment that I isolate the west by taking this side, and this area must be without infrastructure. Now, there's one thing that I wanted to, to point out, and this is this thing. This is a telegraph. Telegraph office. This is uh, in conjunction with the railroads and the and the trains that you see on the map. This is a very nice touch as, as well. The telegraph office. This is going to increase happiness and will um, spread your influence. So this is good. The public order is going to be dependent on the influence of your. Of your faction so this is instead of religion is is spreading influence and going down for for successionist which is called here and the unionists are going up this is going to determine the public order and the stability of your regions so now that i have this guy uh so that's pretty neat yeah pretty pretty neat okay let's uh pull this guy out And this guy out as well. My honor is to serve. So now I know there's a guy here. So now I'm going to send. I don't have more cavalry. So I'm going to be bold and move my my militia a little bit here. Mm-hmm. So he's going to stay here. Now it's a it's a bad it's a bad thing to to attack this defensive position. Uh, they're going to have the upper hand. So I'm going to return here. It's not doing anything with this. So I'm going to pull back in here. Okay. Now we wait for that guy there. And here we're still besieging here. Now the English. Let's say hello to the Canadian English. Okay, pretty neat. You can see here the trains the area here of West New York, Ohio. Very nice. Now, actually, we're in good terms with um, with Britain. We're friendly with them. Friendly with Netherlands, Britain, and... Oh, we're friendly with the United States of Colombia as well. Spain is a little bit indifferent. Uh, I, I'm thinking if it's going to be better to attack this guy but I don't want to move from here because if I move from here okay let's say I, I want to attack here but if I move from here then this guy is going to go up and I don't have defenses here I want to really bother this guy to move from here but i don't know if it's going to be enough to do this let's try instead of doing that i'm going to use just one wisconsin so i have the union wisconsin volunteers with the lawrence rifle the Lorenz rifle is an Austrian rifle, which is depicting the fact that the, the, the United States could not, um, you know, you're going to produce the, um, the new Springfield 1861, but uh, not all the units are going to have the same, uh, the same weapons. Springfield uh, M1861, this is for the Illinois. The Wisconsin's, they have the Lorenz, the Austrian Lorenz here. 
So I'm going to send the Wisconsin here. This is the Wisconsin with the Austrian Lawrence. Uh, slightly here to these uh, hills. Perhaps this way. This way I could lure this guy to go out. Now, this guy perhaps can go out with this. If not, I'm going to be bold and move it here. Away from the... Yeah, here. Away from the influence of these guys, and let's see what happens. There you go. I'm going to uh, retreat. Ah, my plan worked. Oh, so he, so he started off blockading me, and now he's going to Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. For some reason, this guy decided to blockade Boston, Massachusetts. Why is this? What is he blockading? He's blockading me. Well, at least uh, I have regained the trade with Spain, Haiti, and the United States of Colombia. Let me see. Oh, that's quite good. I have full value of my exports right now. And these, I think Spain is now indifferent. So, okay. That's that's good. That's good. So let me go. Let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to move this guy here. One of of the two. Now I'm going to stop this guy here because I want to show you the model here. It actually has this this um this pipe here, which is quite neat, on the actual model, and these guys here that you that you're seeing on the on the trade route, look at this one. They have the pipes and this um the um, and the wheel here, the wheel. So it's um very nice, very nice detail. Okay, let's see what we got here. So we still need to, to wait. Two turns, I think. So in construction, I will... Well, let's see if I can recruit something else, I don't think. Union Mounted Infantry. These guys I can recruit three out of three. These are mounted infantry. I think they can dismount, can skirmish. These are dragoons, basically. They have the Spencer rifle M1865. Um, they're not bad, but the accuracy is quite standard. Two turns here, so let me see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And with these guys, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I think with those guys, I would be able to reinforce here. Okay, I see move here, movement. Okay, so see so what we're going to do here. Still, the next turn, these guys 
are out of here. I cannot demand surrender because it's full of deployed. These are this is an army that is deployed there. Uh Let me move this guy and see if I can find an army that perhaps is approaching or something. Cannot see anything here. So I don't know if I... Do I attack them here? Okay, so apparently there are no armies coming from Charleston, North and South Carolina. And these guys are about to to capitulate. No. Let's take the Union Cavalry here. I'm going to move this guy here. Okay, sadly... Okay, they took this. They they live here. Let's move these guys here. Hmm, quite interesting here. Let's see what happens now. There's something weird here. So these guys decided to move from here and they sent the guys that were here disappeared. So there was one guy here and one full stack here. So this is weird. They could be anywhere here. And the fact that they splitted this one is weird as well. I'm afraid of the guy that was here. Perhaps he's, he's here. Who knows? Perhaps I can lure that guy. If I move this guy here. Yeah, I think I can do it. So I'm going to send this guy here to... to South Carolina. This fourth rate battle steam frigate. Just to see where is the other guy. I just want to see him. I can see him. Okay. Let's return. Yeah, I hope... Well, actually, they don't have anything here. That's for sure. Well, actually, I'm not sure. Hopefully, they are not going to attack me here. So, this guy left the region of Jackson, Mississippi because he was following, trying to capture these Wisconsin volunteers that very bravely move into this area. Now, they still don't want to cross in here because they don't want to leave these alone. But they have. As of right now, I don't know what happened with, with the general that was here. I'm still here in the bridge. Over here, this guy is moving to to the Wichita Falls. Uh, so this doesn't concern me because I can still I still have this guy here. So I'm gonna move this guy here. So these guys can tell that an army of the Union is moving here. Okay, so let's continue building here. Here in terms of buildings, I will advance to cased assembly. And this is the great arsenal, the maximum. Mm. 
Now the walls, if you see this, 50 turns and 15,000. The money is not a it's not a problem, but but 50 turns I think is not is not worth it. So let's advance here a little bit with the infrastructure. I want to put this in the same level. So what I'm going to do here. Okay, let's pull these guys here. This guy is still going to stay in here. Perhaps if this guy attacks me, I don't want them. I don't want him to attack. Oh, there you are. So he crossed the the river here. It was here. Hmm. This is interesting. Okay, let's uh, approach. Mm hmm. Now you see this. Perhaps this is my opportunity to make this guy attack me here. Now, I can move here, but I would leave this area unprotected. I don't want to leave them to... unless up to the point that I have given enough reinforcements to boot, to boot forward, I don't want to leave this, this breach. So it's not... It, it was not a, a waste of time, because right now I know that if I do this, this guy is going to go out. At least if I lure him, as, as, it, as, as he is right now, I can defeat him. I can do that. Okay, let's do it like this. Perhaps this is going to be enough for this guy to attack me here, I, I believe. So with this guy, I will definitely return here because I'm going to need a little bit of, of cavalry here. And these guys are a very good Union Videte. Small squad of fast cavalry used for scouting. The word Videte is a spelling variant of word Videte which in turn derives from the French and Italian words vedetta, influenced by word vedere, which means to see. And it was a name for a mounted sentry post forward, so this is a recon, recon unit. So as you can see, I'm going to... I'm, I'm really taking my time here because I'm really enjoying this this campaign, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really taking my, my time. This is a very well made mod. And I want to, to to beat the Confederates. So I have to think with I have to think here. Okay, let's end the turn. So there he goes. Funny thing, this guy is following, was following the train route. Let's see what the Confederates are going to do. Hmm. Okay, he returned here. Okay, he's going to stay there. Now the reinforcements are coming. This guy didn't move. Quite interesting. 
quite interesting indeed. Now Buford has his Buford Scalvery Dragoons here. Okay. Now we capture here. Everything is destroyed here now. What about the public order? 12 with the lowest class and 11 with the higher class. There's a lot of resistance to foreign occupation because there is 88% secessionists and 12% unionists. Basically, the only unionists that, that are here are the actual army here of Mr. Grant. So that's a victory for Grant. Let's send this guy here. Okay, I think we are okay with this. I I'm still waiting for the other guys there. So I'm going to do here. About trade here, we're very good. The value is okay, nothing is being blockaded. Here, for example, there's nothing. So I can still move a navy here. If I'm going to build a fishing fleet here, a fishery here, I'm going to destroy this. So now they give us here, for some reason I cannot click this. Perhaps it's because of this guy. Let's move this guy here. What about this thing? Okay, I'm using the keyboard here. But it's not allowing me to select this. I'll select this this here. This as well, but I cannot select this one. Hmm. That's weird. Never happened to me. Is it because of these? Let me see, let me move with this right here. No, I can't. Yeah, for some reason I can't do that. We are not planning to move further south, well, up to this point, at least. There's there's nothing we can suspect here of whatever they are doing here. Now let's move these guys. This is a very, very rough terrain here. Hmm. Look at this they have here. Confederate shall be raiders. Okay. What can we do to lure these guys? Still using the technique of the horses. Okay, so McClellan isn't going to have its uh, his fight here. Okay, this guy stays here. And now, here we have to figure out what what to do here. Okay, I'm going to send this guy here, and this horse is going here. Oops. 
Okay, just move this guy here, which I don't want it. And now... I have to select this horse. Can we try to lure him here? Okay, let me see. Why move this guy here? No. It's it's enough here. I I am afraid that that is not, there there aren't going to be enough movement points if this guy moves through here. So I'm going to risk this and move. No, actually I don't need. This is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna leave. One militia here, and move this guy here. <laughs> the reason behind this is because if this guy is here, I have enough movement points if this guy moves. So that's my reason behind this. And this guy is still on the influence here, so this guy is not going to attack either by sending troops from here to here or this guy. And then I can push this guy further. So this way... This guy is going to see my Union of Death Cavalry as a, an easy catch. So let's see what happens. And from here, I'm pretty sure that I can take the river here and attack these Confederate Texas Volunteers and these other 2nd Texas Infantry. Now, this is different. This is some sort of 2nd uh, Texas Sharpshooter. These are skirmishers and two line infantry. So, pretty sure it's going to be better for me. I'm going to leave this guy here and I'm going to attack this later on. So, yeah, so far that's what is happening. And I think I'm going to leave it here. So, for some reason, I cannot click here, but hopefully there is not going to be anything that is going to be a CTD. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. This was Victus. See you in the next one.